Now, you just gave such an inspirational, motivating talk here this morning. What's it like for you when a room full of young people tell you how inspirational you've been in, in the way that they lead their lives? I'm honored, I'm humbled to hear young people saying they've been inspired, they've been influenced by the work that I've done on my journey. But also, I am so excited to see and hear what young people are doing in South Africa today. They've got dreams and they're fearless. They, they, they're going forward to attain what, what, what they, they feel that, that they can make a difference with in South Africa today. And I like that. I feel like a mother hen. I'm so happy. And I want to, 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 to spread the word for the rest of South Africa to know, for people in different parts of the world to know. And there are connection points. This uh, Red Bull Amapigo initiative is, is, is precious. So more young people should know about it and so that in future they can participate, but also they can talk about it instead of talking about negative things that are happening. Now I think it's becoming very evident lately that the young people in South Africa are very passionate about their futures and passionate about this country. What does that tell you about the South Africa that we're living in today? The South Africa that we're living in today is a South Africa where um, there, are, there are separate movements taking place all at the same time. I think it is good that young people are so passionate about what they are doing, but they don't get given a platform to, to, to be seen nationally uh, so that those who are feeling hopeless, who are feeling I isolated and um, like uh, their dreams will never be anything because of poverty, because of lack of resources, they can feel, oh, that person looks just like me. That person speaks my language. That person has got a dream similar to mine. I should reach out and find that person. And the, 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 the Facebooks and the Twitters and what, I hope they open those roads. They're like invisible threads that must reach people in advantaged and disadvantaged communities. So what young people are doing today it tells me that our future is in good hands. Now, we spoke about telling good stories earlier. You said there's not enough good stories being told in South Africa, and I think a lot of us can agree when we turn on our TVs and flip on the radio, we're always, we're, we're being, I think, bombarded a little bit by, by the negative energy and the negative stories. How do we go about changing that? How do we tell those good stories? We are definitely bombarded by bad news in the media all the time. The headlines as you are driving in the streets, as you are um, arriving at an event, people say, did you hear what happened? So and so killed so and so. Did you hear the explosion? All of this bad news. But there are such good things. Imagine if somebody walked in, did you hear the good news? of such and such a thing that has happened. Did you hear about the person who did this and this and this? So it is, it is up to us to, 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 to free ourselves from those bad news um, uh, that, that, that are, are, are forced upon us mm -hmm. by the media. We, we've got platforms where we can meet one another and share those stories until they become um, the talking point, they become the, the breaking news. And we, we can SMS to one another what has happened instead of SMSing the ugly things that have happened. Today, when we heard about the passing of Mam Loretta Ngobo, I heard yesterday already because the family told me, um, I, I remembered so many things about her. She was such an inspirational woman, such a fighter, such a, a, a beautiful laugh. I immediately started hearing her laughter in my mind. And all of those things, we should remember those things, the privilege of having known her, the gratitude that is inside me. More of us should be grateful. Sad, yes, at her passing, but it was her time for us. What did we learn from her? What did we enjoy about being in her presence at given time, different given times? And so the same thing that's happening in South Africa today, we must make it our business to, to, to hear wonderful ideas and initiatives like uh, Amapigo and say to other people when they are doing something, you should link up with Amapigo. You should uh, connect with so-and-so. You should uh, do this. It's happening in Kailicha, such and such a thing. It's happening in New Brighton, in Port Elizabeth. It's happening in Umlazi, in, in, in KwaZulu Natal, Pretoria. So let's, let's just link up people um, instead of waiting. The media is not going to change this week no? or next week. The media is busy hunting for, good, for bad news. Sometimes I think journalists wake up in the morning and they say, I wonder who's going to die today. I wonder who's going to rape somebody today. It's like they wake hey, up in the morning. Hey, I'm here. I didn't, I'm a journalist. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I'm here sharing the good news. I, I'm glad you're showing the good news. But it seems like many journalists wake up wondering who's going to die, who's going to be raped. And so journalists who are telling good news should be applauded. So it's our business to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You see? You, you are in the minority. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I'm, 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 I'm wanting us to bombard you with good things that are happening so that you will not have an alternative but to tell those stories. <laughs> I want to congratulate you on some good news you have. You're one step closer to your oral history museum. Yes. That's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful with the people that are helping us. And also the help comes from the most unexpected quarters. And also the recording of the Hope Song CD has been an amazing experience. Everybody came with such positive energy. And every cent that comes from the sales of the Hope Song goes to the account of the Memory House. All of these things, we're hoping that we're going to keep growing. All right, the museum's going to be called the Memory House. Yes. Tell me about that name. The Memory House is, uh, the word house for me, it's a beautiful home mm. and uh, that's where families gather, that's where families uh, have a sense of belonging and that warmth and uh, and, and, and that sense that we, we share stories with one another. So I've been dreaming of a Memory House, a place where you can house ordinary people's stories. And uh, when we, when we, uh, as the organization Kanamasiko, we um, introduced to this uh, to this company, Bisguti Perpetuity, Pro and they heard about this dream. They said, "Well, they've got a space at Pixley House. Can we use that space?" And I was so grateful to find uh, um, a physical space, take it away from my dreams, make it real. And uh, so that's that's why it's called a, a house because it's a home that will be housing the stories of our people. It's going to be audio and audio visual. Now, today we spoke about preserving South African culture and South African language. Mm -hmm. how, how does oral history help us do that? Oral history plays a very, very important role in preserving our history and as well as um, uh, uh, preserving the stories of the happenings that are, that are happening today. Because if we don't um, speak up about those things often enough, they, 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 it's, they're almost like they never happened. We can uh, wait for somebody one day to write them down in a book. We can wait one day for somebody to make a short film about it or to do a small radio drama. But if we continue telling them, a story told and retold is able to stay alive. So that's why we are, we are celebrating oral um, history. And it's, it doesn't have to be in a traditional setting around the fire at a, at a rural home. It can be anywhere. Stories can travel. You know, when, when, when many storytellers uh, that are my friends in different parts of the world, they, 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 we hear that we're meeting at a storytelling festival in Graz, in Austria, we're meeting in, 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 a, in Scotland, we're meeting in Malawi, we say, I've got a story and we'll travel. Yes, so the stories have got a way of traveling. That's the best thing about stories, yes, I think. the stories can travel. What's the biggest challenge facing South Africa right now when it comes to preserving um, South African identity? This um, idea of having a South African identity is uh, one of the, the biggest challenges in the new South Africa or not so new South Africa because we look at ourselves as being Zulu speaking, we look at ourselves as being Tswana speaking, being Afrikaans or being Indian or being what and we need to find that sameness that, that, that um, uh, sense of, of, of similarities, that sense of, uh, of, of belonging to a country more than belonging to our language groups or to our individual cultural backgrounds. Let's celebrate who we are uh, because we, we need that, but we don't want to do it the American way. The American way of assimilating, to assimilate until you are so diluted that uh, you, you, you can't be Mexican, that you can't be Greek, that you can't be um, Namibian, you can't be from, from, uh, from the wall of people in, in, in Senegal. So all of that, for me, we need to, to, to enjoy who we are as individuals, whether you are Hindi, you are from the, 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 the you, you, speak, you speak Hindi, and you are a Hindu person, or you speak Chivenda, or what, let's celebrate that, but let's find a sense of belonging in this home that is South Africa, this place of, of, um, of origins. So we, we are dealing with that. That is our reality. And I think through storytelling, we're able to think, my grandmother said that just the other day, to be able to say, you know what, we say that often before we have lunch at home. We, we, we sing that song when we do this and this and those realities should be part and parcel of our uh, South African identity. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward also to having more men who are from South Africa enjoying dressing up and being good looking. Uh, because um, in other countries people dress up in, in, in their traditional attires and they become modernized over time because culture is dynamic. And in South Africa it's almost like a, it's a woman's um, a domain to dress up and look good. Men can just... Um, 
it's, it's just be whatever. And, and, and if you are dressed up, then you must wear a suit. Or you must um, wear maybe a South African captain, a West African captain. We've got to find a way then of celebrating certain things that are us. And, and love it and feel good and walk tall. So now you've told all the men out there, they must dress up. Yes, men must dress up and look good and be South African and not be apologetic about it as well.